locker room before the game here at Finley Stadium. You see the sledgehammer denoting the perfect SOCON record, and they've got space for more games at the bottom of it. And we'll see if that sledgehammer pounds its way into round three in the quarterfinals. Led by that man, Russ Huseman. He played defensive back here in his sixth year. He's already won more games than they did the 11 years before that. And also a three-time SOCON Coach of the Year. 7-0 and in the SOCON, earning the eight seed in a home playoff game in round two. Nick Pollard who will do the punting duties, will also kick off for the mocks, wearing those swanky blue jerseys with the white helmets. Indiana State already proved their medal last week, upsetting Eastern Kentucky at Eastern Kentucky by scoring the last 36 points of that game. They hope not to get behind too quickly today. And the mocks who won the toss and deferred kick it off all the way back to the five yard line. That is Rondell Green still working his way past the 25 and that's where the Sycamores will start their day as quarterback Mike Parrish who is third in completion percentage, seventh in yards and ninth in yards per game. He's gonna sling it around. 501 pass attempts this season for this offense. Well, and that's the thing, Ryan. He's going to put the ball in the air 40, maybe 50 times a day. This is a very pass-first offense. It all starts right there with number 15. School records in yards, yards per game, and those 20 touchdowns. He just needs one to set the school record by himself, and they'll hand off to Buck Logan out of the backfield. Not much there. The Mox defense has got to show up. They send Donovan Lane in there. The only thing that's interesting here, Ryan, as I said, Indiana State is a very pass-first offense, but with the weather, it's been raining off and on all day. You wonder if they'll try to at least lean on the run game a little bit more. That was sophomore D. Virgin, the boundary corner, and they say he's their most athletic defensive player. Empty the backfield for Parrish. Time to throw, knocked down. Knocked down by the middle linebacker, Muhasabi Wakil. And Wakil, he's the man in the middle. I'll tell you what, does a great job for that middle linebacker position. Indiana State spreads the field five wide. Nice job by Wakil getting in that throwing window and getting a hand on it. Big play now, for, forcing third and long. This offense doesn't mind third and long because they're so pass efficient, but they don't want to be in a lot of it today. They'll sling it, tipped, intercepted at the 27 yard line. It's going back inside the 10, a quick turnaround and a pickoff. Kendall made it, Samaje Kendall, the dimebacker. Well, I'll tell you what, Ryan, they brought some pressure, which is kind of uncharacteristic for Chattanooga, bring a little bit of pressure up the middle here, as we'll see. There they bring the linebacker, Nikavian Leslie, and then there, nice job on the tip, Samaje Kendall, the dime linebacker, brings it all the way down inside the five yard line. Nice job concentration as that ball was floating up in the air. In Chattanooga here in their home stadium, playoff game, first time in 30 years, Ryan, they are off to a bang. His second pick of the year, and that sends Parrish over to the phones to talk with the offensive staff. 27-yard return, and that sets up the mocks on the three. First and goal. Put it right on the ground. First play from scrimmage is a touchdown. Quick turnaround and Keon Williams punches it in, his 30th career rushing score. All right, I talk about how Indiana State throws the ball a lot. They don't run the ball much. Well, UTC, they're gonna run the ball a lot, especially that man right there, Keon Williams, who just had an unbelievable November. Those four games in November, seven touchdowns, average 5.3 yards per carry, punches it in on their first offensive play. The player of the month in the SOCON. Extra point, up and good. It took one minute after a 30-year wait, and the home team has a lead. After the interception, return to the three. Keon Williams.
Adams ran it in for the game's first score. That's all it's going to take is doing what we've done. It's not going to take a superhuman effort. It's not going to take anything. Play with a chip on your shoulder today. You guys belong. Let's roll. Russ Huseman, a defensive-minded guy, won a national championship as the defensive coordinator at Richmond right before he came here to be the head coach. Boy, it was fun sitting in his office yesterday, Ryan, just talking about his philosophies on things. And the thing I, I noticed he talked about right there was the same thing yesterday. He lets his kids play, doesn't try to out-scheme the other team, just puts his guys out there in the right positions and lets them go make plays. Aaron Killebrew returns the kick out past the 20, a 20-yard return. There you see Coach Huseman. First quarter points this year, Chattanooga rolls it up on opponents, and Indiana State has played behind a lot at the end of first quarters this year. Well, it was kind of the same thing last week for Indiana State. They really didn't get going until that third quarter. They had scored the 24 unanswered in the third quarter on the way to that upset here, but they need to find a way to get in this game here quick on the road. Mike Parrish, a little dump off. A big first down run on the first carry of the game for number 32, Lamonte Booker. He was off to the races there. And Lamonte Booker, he's more of the perimeter run guy. See, they just kind of pitch it out there to him. Nice job downfield blocking. Look at all the offensive linemen springing him. Really like Lamonte Booker. Again, they'll have him, Dimitri Taylor. He's more of their, their perimeter guys. And then Buck Logan, number five, is more of the interior rush guy. So a 20-yard run on their first play of their second possession and now they dump it off to the right side for this right yeah, that was Robert Tanya a nice target six foot five 220 pounds he, he's kind of the guy that Mike Parrish the quarterback has a real nice rapport with so I look for Parrish to find Tanya most of the afternoon here Tanya Reyes AJ Johnson they've got a bevy of guys they will spread the ball around Keani Harris as well different formation for the Sycamores here on second and short, it looks like they will have the first down. The first time we get to call the name Davis Toll, he made the stop number 90. I know a guy you like very well. Yeah, Davis Toll, number 90, high motor, relentless. He was the SOCON defensive player of the year. You see there, number 90, SOCON record, 37 sacks in his career. Buck Buchanan, finalist. Oh, he's also an academic All-American there, Ryan. So he's getting it done in all phases here for Chattanooga. You see a shot of Mike Sanford, the... Indiana State coach, they've slapped together a drive. Now they're in Mox territory. And up the middle. Give it again to Tanyan with Nikavion Leslie making the stop. And they go with a little wildcat action there. To Tanyan put him at quarterback, I was going to say, because you're not going to see Mike Parrish no. run the ball much. They run kind of a zone read offense, typical of spread teams. But Parrish isn't a guy that's going to keep the ball much. Most of his carries are on sacks, if you will. Negative 180 rushing yards this season. Stand in the pocket, little play action, and Buck Logan didn't fool a whole lot of guys. Davis made the stop, Keontae Davis, 93. Again, you really see Indiana State here early trying to establish a run. Again, that's something they haven't done well all year. They only average a 93 rush yards per game. But you can tell Mike Sanford and company, the head coach, said, look, we got to find a way to at least establish some semblance of a run and not be so one-dimensional here today. Also protect Parrish from getting pounded. A one-yard run makes it third down and six. Pretty good crowd here at Finley Stadium. They're still filing in. They'll go for the deep ball. Almost a layout catch. And that was Chris O'Leary laying out for it. Parrish's throw was actually on the money there. Yeah, that was a nice job there. Indiana State caught Chattanooga in man to man and ran a nice crossing route. O'Leary had a little bit of a step. Uh, just, man, Parrish just a little bit outside the reach of O'Leary. Decent ball, but again, just outside the uh, the fingers, outstretched fingertips of Chris O'Leary. Osborne Ume, Ume, 83 punts this year, and he's got a short one to make here. And he put it into the corner, coffin corner kick. 
Out of bounds right around the 10. That's about what you want out of him. But now, instead of getting the ball at the three, Jacob Huseman and company will get it at the 10, and I don't think that's a real big deal for them either. They don't mind a 90-yard drive. They keep that defense off the field. No, they'll do it. And, and Jacob Huseman, the quarterback, in my opinion, he's everything you want in a spread quarterback. He can run the ball effectively. He's the second leading rusher on the team. He makes great decisions, and most importantly, he's deadly accurate. 68% completion percentage. That leads the entire nation. That's one of my big bugaboos is completion percentage for quarterbacks. In today's football, with the way the rules are slanted toward the offense, you should be completing a lot of passes, and Jacob Huseman certainly does that. Spoken like a linebacker. And he'll keep it. He will run. And he will run successfully. A first down run for a first down for Houston. It's a nice job here on Houston on the zone read. He reads the defensive end. Defensive end there, number 25, stays outside. So Houston just takes up the middle again, as I just said, Ryan. Makes great decisions here in his zone read spread option scheme. One thing you're going to see from Chattanooga is a ton of formations. They really keep the defense on their heels, off balance. Formations into the boundary, motions, trades, things like that really keep them on their heels. They bounce it to the outside. Little power play for Keon Williams, who had the touchdown earlier. He missed the Tennessee game, but... 30 career touchdowns, 14 of them this year. Quite a story, Keon Williams. We'll get into this more as, as the day goes on here. But as you said, missed a couple games, broke a hand early in the year. They put a plate in that hand, Ryan. He's back out on the field. And again, he's really, really makes this offensive go. Offense go first team, all SoCon running back, Keon Williams. Great story for that young man. And hopefully we'll get a chance to tell it throughout the afternoon. Linda around left side in this direction. They'll gain about five or six. Travis Starks made the stop, but they send it out to Tommy Hudson, a second team all SoCon performer. Yeah, Tommy Hudson, he's their leading wide receiver. Not, not the biggest guy in the world, 5'11, 175, but makes a ton of plays. You see right there on that one on the jet sweep. Tommy Hudson, really a nice player here for the mocks. Yeah, runs, catches passes. Coaches say he. Makes us go. Very athletic. Second down and four. And look at all that offensive line action. They are really creating space for these guys to run through as Williams, another successful run, gets the first down. And it, as I just said, Ryan, they do a lot of different things. This is just old school power football. They go, they put a fullback in the game, and Keon Williams runs right behind him. As a former defensive player, uh, you know, is watching the mocks all week. You're saying, God, they do a little bit of this, they do a little bit of that. It's just hard to get a grasp, hard to get your head around everything this offense does for Chattanooga. Fake the toss. Houston will keep it and get across midfield. And he'll gain about eight yards. Mark Sewell made the stop, but not before the big gainer across the midfield stripe. Mark Shaw, number 21, he's one of their best players. I love watching him. He's going to have to have a big time day. He's made a ton of nice plays all year. His brother Alex was actually a safety before Mark came in. So there's been a soul at free safety for Indiana State for the last seven years. And I'll tell you what, again, I've really enjoyed watching Mark Shaw all week. Got those four picks. Also three fumble recoveries. He's been a, a guy that gets to the football and picks it up for that defense. Houston to the air, going for the big ball, and just overthrew his intended receiver, Xavier Borashati, who is their deep ball threat. Caught a 61-yarder against Mercer earlier this year. And for Indiana State on defense, you know, their defense is based on pressure. But you can see what Chattanooga is doing is they're getting up to the line, doing a lot of high tempo. And I think that's going to be, a, a, you know, they're going to try to do that to keep guys like that, number 55, Connor Underwood, from moving around and stemming and going to the other side. Really try to keep the tempo, keep the foot, foot on the gas, and not allow to do them a lot of just crazy blitzes and stunts and things. Third and short, you see their third down numbers. UTC. And the Fox want to take a timeout to discuss what to do here on third down and two. We talked with 
Jeff Durden, the offensive coordinator, and he said it's important for us. Yeah, we want to score, but we want to try to use clock. We want to shorten the game, just lower, uh, decrease the number of possessions, and help out our defense by being ball control. Well, absolutely right. That's what he said. We shorten the game for our defense, which is which is kind of the opposite for Indiana State on offense. They they want to throw the ball around a bunch of different ways, but they the mocks really lean on that run game. They also get the running backs involved in the pass game a lot too. You'll see Ricardre Bagley get out there and, and pass routes. Keon Williams also will as well. And that's kind of the, the philosophy, Ryan, of the spread offense is just get all your weapons out there in this space and allow them to make plays and the mocks sure are good at it. Much like Houston won a national title, so did Durden at JMU in 2004. Let's take a closer look at Chattanooga since this is their first playoff game since the early 80s, 12,000 the enrollment here, and Terrell Owens played his college football here. People forget about him. How about that? Terrell Owens made a ton of plays in Chattanooga many, many years ago, and boy, he was, for a couple years there, Ryan, he was about the most exciting thing in the National Football League. Right up the middle, an easy first down and more. Keon Williams had a setback a couple of years ago, was removed from the team and redeemed himself and has been a good citizen since. And this offensive line, Ryan, really had to be shuffled around at the beginning of the year, but look at this, hat on a hat and then just nice vision by Keon Williams hitting the seam up there to the left side. 25 yards for him, now he has 45 on the day. Already up the middle, Indiana State is just reacting to everything, they haven't really stymied this offense. They give it to the fullback, Derek Crane, number 41. You don't know who's going to come out of the line with the football with these guys. Yeah, that's the thing. They, they get the ball in the hands of, of seven, eight different guys are going to get touches. And as I said, it, it's hard for a defense to really focus in on one or two guys. They, you've got someone coming here, some another guy coming the next play. And this offense is really based on, again, keeping that defense, making them think out there instead of reacting and playing. Houston will keep it around the left side, and he'll be close to the 10-yard line. He'll have a first down, ridden out of bounds by Travis Starks. Really no negative plays for this Mox offense. And that's kind of in line with the head coach, Russ Houston. Very disciplined, sound guy. Hey, let's go out there and not beat ourselves, not take negative plays, stop the other team, get the ball back to our offense. He's been coaching defense and been a real defensive mind in college football for a long, long time. Jacob Huseman, his son, really runs this offense well. He's the first mock with 4,000 pass yards and 2,000 career rushing yards. They'll ride Williams to the outside. Let's him have it on the zone read and he'll get it inside the five. Another zone read play there by the quarterback, Houston. Houston. Here's their red zone numbers, 88% this season. Today, the one trip so far. Usman keeps it and is stuck at the line for the first time today. Really no gain. Conlon Cassidy, number eight. And Lonell Brown, Jr., number 25, with the stop. Third down, they need to get to the two and a half for a first down. Substitutions for the mocks, so the umpire stands over the football to let Indiana State get its personnel grouping. And look at this, Ryan, again, formation into the boundary. You don't see this much, but it's really, it's really hard on the defense to line up to that kind of look. Fake the jet sweep, and they'll go up the middle. And it looked like Patrick McCown made the stop. He's one of the defensive linemen. And this is where Indiana State has, has been pretty good this year. They, they've give up, get, they give up a lot of yards, but they've usually been pretty good in the red zone. And the main thing, Ryan, they do is they force turnovers. They force 29 turnovers. The Sycamores are plus 12 in turnover margin. That's been a great reason for their success this season. They force two fumbles in the red zone. Here's the 13th play of this clock-eating drive that started at their own 10-yard line. Fourth down and in inches. Look at that formation. Getting Deusman just some space. He didn't get to the end zone, but he did get the first down. So they'll convert the fourth down, the seventh one they've converted this season. 
They're in the top 20 in the NCAA in fourth down conversion is because they're so efficient. And you got a little, like, kind of a, a triple fullback look right there yeah. for Hughes when they run three guys in front of him and say, hey, go block someone. And as you said, Ryan, just enough for the first down. Now the Mox will get three cracks inside the three-yard line here to get in the end zone. Those are the football just nuzzled up against the one. Same formation. Now they'll switch it left side, and the human bulldozer ready to push their way for Houston to get his 27th career rushing touchdown. The all-time leader in quarterback wins at Chattanooga with 22, and they are 14 points into his 23rd career win. Took nearly half the quarter for the touchdown. They, they trade the formation to the other side. A triple fullback look. Jacob Houston punches it in for the touchdown. Mocks up two scores. To get a first down, they looked like they were going to do the same thing on that on that first down goal line play. Yeah, and I talked about what UTC does on offense is they get you lined up in a way, but they force you to, to react defensively with their lineup. You see three guys here. Okay, they're in good shape. Then go ahead and roll it. What they'll do is they'll trade all three guys. Okay, so now three mocks move over here. Where, how come no one's moving over? They got this whole side here outmanned, and that's why they go in for the touchdown. Three running backs in Houston. Look at that. Just clear. Run right into the end zone. It's kind of like a chess match, Ryan. You got, it's like, like Army on the battlefield. When you move your guys over here, the defense has to react. And when I play, for whatever reason, Indiana State did, did not react from an alignment standpoint. All 93 offensive yards have been on the ground. The, the long bomb did not connect. A three-yard drive and then a 90-yard drive. And it was six on four. How do you expect to win six on four on the left side of that line? Exactly. And again, that, that's, the, that's the thing where the, the, you, you got to react to what the offense does and line your guys up properly. And it looked like Indiana State just didn't know what to do. The kick return went for a not much. Rollins was upended by Dale Warren. He only got 13 yards on the return. Demonte Booker. So far today, not a great start for Indiana State. One of four for Mike Parrish and the pick. Yeah, it, it, you're right. And he was 72% completion percentage last week. 41 of 57. Did a real nice job. But here so far, he just looks a little bit out of sync. And again, Chattanooga doesn't do a lot defensively from a look standpoint. They just line up and play ball, but they know their positions better than you know your positions. Run it to the outside with Logan. D. Virgin made the stop. They got down 16 and nothing last week and then scored the final 36 points of the game which started with a field goal at the end of the first half. You can't keep playing catch up and right. because the other team has to be a part of you shutting them out. And yeah, we just saw their head coach, Mike Sanford, there. That's definitely a concern. He told us this week, look, you can't spot the other team two touchdowns and expect to get back in every game. Get it out to Keani Harris, who is swarmed under quickly in a nice tackle by 38. That's Waukeel yeah, again. Waukeel. I'll tell you what, you remember talking to Coach Houston in, in, the, in the room the other day, he said, you know, Akio, he can't run, he can't bend, he can't catch. He looks, he said he's 24, it looks like he's 54, but the guy just makes plays. I love guys that, look, well, they're not maybe the most athletic football players on the field, but they have a knack for the game, and Waukeel is really something special from that middle linebacker position. Great instincts, third down and one. Parrish kept it, and bad things happened. Wow, a ton of guys in there. Derek Lott, Alfonso Stewart. I mean, they're just winning the line of scrimmage battle right there. Just a nice job. It looked like it was the nose tackle, Josh Freeman, who had a big de a big uh, stop there, getting some penetration. Also, Derek Lott, as you just mentioned, penetration is going to continue to kill this Indiana State team if they don't figure out a way to block those guys up front. No gain, so fourth and one, and they'll have to punt it away. A swinging gate there. Huge punt by Ume. And a fair catch, so that's where the Mox will start again. 
A three yard touchdown, a 90 yard touchdown drive, and the mocks get it for the third time with three minutes. And two guys that are seeing the game very differently from the opposite sides of the field. One that's super concerned, the other hopefully about to go up by three touchdowns. Yeah, for the guy on the right there, Russ Houston, this game plan is going exactly how he wants it to go. Defense getting off the field, offense controlling the football. Would you believe after three drives? that Indiana State only has 10 yards in the air. That's just not the way they play football. Donovan Lane makes the stop on the run by Keon Williams. Every yard gain, 93 of them, now 97 of them have been on the ground for the Mocs. That's not a surprise. And Indiana State defensively were seventh in their conference, giving up 165 rush yards per game. But right now they have no answer for the rush. Again, they do a good job pressuring the quarterback and moving that guy right there all around, number 55, Connor Underwood. But if they're running the ball right at you, you better have another answer. Houston, the fake, the throw, the catch, and then it's dropped. Tommy Hudson had his hands on it, but Travis Starks dispossessed him of the football. Excellent play by Travis Starks. A nice job. Receiver got a little bit of an inside leverage on him. We'll check it out here. But left hand right there, not giving up on the play. Travis Starks is their best cover corner, has four interceptions on the year, the junior from Chicago, Illinois. Nice play by Starks. Second team all Missouri Valley Football Conference for number seven, the junior. 16 pass breakups. Look at this backfield set here. Two, an H back, a full back. Dump it down, that's Crane and he'll get maybe a yard. Good job by the defense that time. They'll force a third and medium coming up. Alec Lyons made the stop. Fourth down, excuse me, so there will be a punt here. Try a little trick, a tricky play there on third down and six, and they didn't get much. And what they did was they used Connor Underwood's speed against him there, and then leaked, leaked the fullback crane out, but Indiana State was able to hold him. And Mark Sewell back there, a chance to give the trees some good field position. Rugby style kick from Nick Pollard. Low liner. You gotta worry that it hits your guys when you're you got the low rugby kick. Yeah, that rugby kick is something you're seeing more and more these days for that particular reason, Ryan. You hope that thing bounces around, hits the heels of, of one of the of one of the return men, and the, the punt team can jump on that ball. 39-yard kick, no return, so the Sycamores will be back at their own 27 yard line. This is the number one attended stadium in the SOCON. Over 10,000 a game. They led the league in attendance this year. Today, looks like there's still a few tailgaters coming in. The rain did not deter them, Ryan. They're still out here in full force cheering their mock team on. Good for the city of Chattanooga. And these guys are pulling off of that energy. Derek Lott making a stop behind the line of scrimmage on first down. Derek Lott is 6'4", 303, and you better do a better effort oh. of blocking him there than number 62, Alec Jelovic, the center did. Look at it, just ripping right through, gets his 12th and a half tackle for loss on the season. He's, he's an NFL prospect guy. Coach Huesman talked about that yesterday. Great size, five sacks also on the season. You better give a little bit of effort, better effort than that when you try to block him. You know, bulldozer, they're going to go downfield. They got a man open, a free play, and this is going to go to the house. A touchdown for A.J. Johnson, his fourth catch into the end zone this year. And how did A.J. Johnson get behind number three, D. Virgin there? It looked like Virgin was in pretty good shape. It looked like his eyes may have just wandered back into the backfield, and he stopped his feet, allowing Johnson to get behind him. Either way, just like that, Ryan, Indiana State's back in this football game. It's the sound of 10,000 people being quiet. 75-yard touchdown pass from Parrish. And now he, by himself, owns the school record. He just passed Ronnie Fouch with his 21st touchdown throw of the season. And... Indiana State has finally arrived in round two. And look like what happened again. D. Virgin is covering Johnson man to man, but the ball's in the air. Look, as he turns, he's getting ready to turn. His eyes are starting to come back, but as the re as the play goes here, he stops his feet. Just a, just a little bit of enough there to allow the receiver to get behind him. You've got to make sure as you look back to the quarterback, you want to see where he's throwing the ball, when he's throwing the ball, but you've got to keep your feet moving. So many times you see these DBs 
They look back for the ball and they stop their feet. D Virgin it has some good speed on him, but he allowed AJ Johnson to get behind him. 75 yard TD reception. And just like that, they go from 10 yards passing to 85 yards passing. And you see Coach coming over to have a quick word with his athletic corner. Yeah, and D Virgin, he's the first team also, Connor. That kind of play right there just does not happen to him. A real nice, big, athletic co corner. 5'10", 200 pounds, but uh, that, that was just a kind of a mental breakdown there and just really got away from his technique on that particular play. Giving up a couple inches to A.J. Johnson, but just out of position, as you mentioned. Yeah, well, it wasn't the height at all. It was just yeah. that he allowed that, that separation, that cushion to get a little bit too long there. And, and let's give Mike Parrish a lot of credit, too. Mm. That ball was absolutely on the money after he struggled most of the first half here. It's a big one again. They're right back in the game. Look at this kickoff formation here. See if the Sycamores try something dirty here. Nope. But giving them a look for later in the game. Bagley on the return, picking his way up to the 30. Antonio brought us with the hit 26 yard return after the funky formation on the kickoff. Neither team kicking it into the end zone. A little bit of a wind today. It's whipping around out there. The storms came through this morning. We thought maybe the people would stay away, but not for the first home December playoff game. They're going to be here. Well, now it's a struggle, Ryan, about who can recapture the momentum right now. Mm -hmm. Indiana State's got some after the big pass play. Can Chattanooga come right back and keep running the ball, move the ball down the field, and not allow Indiana State back in this football game? Make the jet sweep. Houston around the left side. And he'll have a first down, a run of about 14 yards, ridden out of bounds by Starks. He did a nice job on that run. He had his best offensive lineman, the left guard, Corey Levin, out in front. Nice job blocking downfield. That's another thing you see on this team. Lyman blocking downfield. Also the wide receivers, Hudson, Borashadi, Davis, and Board and company. All downfield blocking to try to really spark this run game. And that's the younger side of the offensive line, the left side. Two redshirt freshmen and a sophomore starting from the center out. That play looked like it might have broken down in the backfield, but not so much. They throw it out for another first down. Yeah, it's Tahar Tyson, the fullback. Yeah. And that's the kind of play that Auburn made famous, even Florida with Tim Tebow a few years ago. It's that run pass option play where whatever the defense does, they're wrong. If they come up on the run, then Houston does what he did right there and hits Tyson in the flat for the pass. If they stay back on the pass, then Houston, a dual threat quarterback, keeps it for the run. We saw some really big plays in this first quarter. It feels like a playoff game. A big run on a sudden change for a touchdown. A long drive that results in another rushing touchdown. And then the 75-yard bomb back the other way. How much more fireworks can we get in this game? Books in round two. The Mocs lead by one touchdown. And they are just formationing <laughs> Indiana State to death. Well, they really are. And this is what I was talking about, the, the Auburn play they kind of made famous a while ago. Go ahead and roll it here. They'll fake the, the dive, and what that does is, look, it gets all these guys sucked up there in, you know, trying to respect the run, and then Houston will carry out his fake, and then here's what you get. You see all these guys, again, respecting the run here. They, won't, they don't want to let Jacob Houston beat them, and allows the fullback, Tyson, to get behind him. To Heron Tyson's first catch of the game, and another rollout, another catch. This is... A guy that leads the country in completion percentage, completing the last play of the first, first quarter and the first play of the second quarter. That one to his fullback, Derek Crane, the other fullback. Yeah, and that's what I was saying. I, I think completion percentage in college football in 2014 is so important because, again, the, the rules allow you to complete passes. They're slanted toward the offense here, so there's really no reason to not have your quarterback be above, or excuse me, be below 60% completion percentage. It just really it just hurts the defense when you're competing pass after pass after pass. Really a tough thing to defend. Three straight plays, they throw it. And then another long gain after a 16-yard a gain on the previous catch. This one goes for almost nine. We'll call it eight yards. And they get it to Ken, uh, Randall. 
<laughs> Enough talk about it. runs up the middle, runs to the outside, lead options, then they get you out in space like we've seen the last couple plays, getting the fullbacks in the flat, really taking advantage of that area of the field. Just whatever the defense does, the offense reacts and finds a way, finds an open space to make plays. A whole lot of misdirection in the backfield, and Williams just plows the play forward for a first down. Travis Starks coming up to make the hit along with Mark Sewell. We've got Starks unofficially with about 10 tackles already, and yeah. that's not good. He's a defensive back. Yeah, when your corner's uh, getting up there in tackles, that's not the best thing in the world. But I'll tell you what, first of all, Indiana State's obviously got to get big here in the red zone, but at some point, Ryan, they're going to need a turnover. As I said earlier, that's what they do best is turn the football over. But this mock offense today looks too powerful for Indiana State to just stop all day long. they got to find a way to turn the ball over. Here's Williams. They did bow up on the line. Only the Citadel had a better red zone percentage this year and they only beat them by one percent 88 percent in the red zone and that doesn't include today's two touchdowns and two trips a one yard gain with patrick mccown making the stop they get it to the eight here's the other thing i'm noticing too is jacob houston is getting the ball out of his hand why because that doesn't allow connor underwood one of the best defensive ends in the fcs to get to him I mean, he may beat his guy up front but the ball's already out of houston's hands in a very proficient manner Graham look like showing blitz here. Dump it out to Williams out of the backfield and he will lose a yard. Knocked out of bounds by Sewell. Ooh, Sewell and Starks he has a nice getting shot. it done. Yeah, Sewell. Get really a, just a, I'd say a football savvy guy. I mean, you watch him all week, he just seems to know the game and know where to line up, knows what the offense is going to do just before they do it and covers a lot of ground out there from that safety position. Those two are 1-2 in passes defended in the conference. Starks fifth in the nation, Sewell 14th in the nation. Split the backs. This is Bagley back there, along with Crane. Give him some blockers. Eusman flushed out for the first time today. Pressure coming, and he just throws it away. And Underwood in his face, that's, you don't want that. I don't want that, but that's the thing about Houston. You, you force him outside the pocket, and arguably that's where he's really even at his best. But it was a nice job by the Sycamores on the back end covering those wide receivers up as Houston was escaping. He was scanning that entire end zone there, but couldn't find anybody to throw the ball to, and they forced the, the field goal attempt. 25-yard attempt here for Enrique Ribeiro. Awarded the job Thursday of the first week of the season. That one sounded blocked. It was blocked. But Indiana State picks it up and takes it to the 20 yard line. He hit 47 yards on his first attempt of the season, but Ribeiro has this one swatted down, we think, it by that like man right there. Patrick McCown knocking it down, the second block of the season for the Sycamores, and they stop the three points with a chance to tie on the next drive. Sycamores going to run away with this game. They got it 14 0 quick, but the Sycamores, just like last week, won't die. Look right here, this is Corey Levin, the best offensive lineman for Chattanooga here, and you'll see he gets scrubbed, just ran right through. On by Patrick now. Sudden change. They try to the deep ball. And just overthrew Gary Owens, the honorable mention all Missouri Valley Football Conference wide out. Well, as I was saying, it was it was 97. Patrick McCown blew right through again. One of the mock's best offensive linemen in Levin. Nice job batting that ball down. And again, we got a football game here, 14 to 7. Only the second blocked kick of Ribeiro this year. They go to the ground. Logan had a hole, but it closed quickly. And thanks to Chattanooga's Zach Rail, Tim Whaley, and Cedric Nettles, held him to a three yard gain. And Nettles does a good job from that strong safety position. Very active in the run game, as you saw in that play, coming up and sticking Buck Logan. Nettles numbers, 67 tackles. Pearson Company, a long way to go here on third down. 
free play? No, they blow it dead because contact was made. And our first penalty of the game. Now sides on the defense. Referee Charles Jabrin and this crew out of the Patriot League. That's the other fun thing about the postseason is they bring in officials who don't know your teams, neutral group. Well, they're all neutral, but you get what I'm saying, from a different league that not familiar with your teams and coaches, just to give you a, an honest look. Met those guys last night, good group of men. That was just a nice job by Parrish on that play with the hard count. Third and two is much, much better than third and five. If they shoot me, third and seven. Roll him out to the right, plenty of time, lots of protection. He wants the deep ball, he's got a man, and nice breakup on the play by that was Trevor right, White. Right, the DB out of Greenville, Tennessee. And we'll get a look at the replay here, but it looked like Trevor Wright had some contact before the ball got there. Right left the guy behind him, but let's see. Is that a little contact in the left arm there before the ball gets there? Trying to hit Travis Reyes. There's the contact. Mm. Uh. We got one-on-one -on -one crime there, both of them wearing number one. If we were, uh, if we were playing at Indiana State there, they, the crowd would be pleading their case for a penalty on that one, I think. So just as they get the ball back off the blocked kick, the Sycamores have to punt it away, and that takes a tree's bounce inside the 30. So the momentum kind of bouncing back and forth after the 46 yard punt. No one has seized the game at this point. And there you see what Chattanooga has done. They got the sudden change on the three. They drove it 90 yards, but uh, I need these last two. Yeah, the last two drives, Indiana State has, has really just done a good job of just giving them some different looks and making really some key third down stops, getting off the field. And obviously the blocked field goal there was huge to keep this just a seven point ball game. Huseman's numbers today, five out of eight. So close to his 67% average. And he'll run it on first down. He's got a blocker. And he'll be dragged down just past the first down line. The game, Mark Sewell made the tackle. Give him 11. Well, as I said, he's their second leading rusher on the year, and he runs tough. He's a, he's a good sized kid, six foot two, 220 pounds. Seem Breaking the tackles of linebackers on that play. Picking up the first down. Look at a, a traditional lineup. Single back with Williams back there. And he'll carry it to the right. Blockers in front. And he'll get close to midfield. A late flag flies in. Well, now Brown Jr. made the stop, and we'll get another visit from the officiating crew. This coming from the deep backfield. Well, they tested out the referee mics before yeah. the game, but we're not hearing I, it here, but it's it a was, hold. It was holding, it looked like it was on number 62 Levin. As it looked like it was in the vicinity of when I saw him throw the throw the flag. Man, that's, that's twice here we've seen the mock shoot themselves in the foot. Characteristically, a, a very disciplined team. Don't get penalized a lot. And here you see Russ Houston bleeding his case here, saying, come on, ref, let's let these guys play ball out here. Chattanooga only had five winning seasons from 84 to 08, that long period between playoff appearances. Georgia Southern and Appalachian State dominated this conference for a long time. They move on to F. BS to the Sun Belt League, and so these guys decided, well, why not us? We'll dump off pass to the fullback Crane, and he is swarmed under. So that very costly penalty on first down has put them in a spot. Sewell came up to make the hit, along with number 20, Jameer Thurman, and 47, Alec Lyons. And, and this is key now with, with with Chattanooga getting the penalties and having some young, long yardage situations, second 20, this is going to allow Indiana State to do what they do best defensively here, and that's bring some pressure. You know at some point, Jacob Houston is going to have to put the ball in the air, and this is where Connor Underwood and Bradley Collins and Lyons and Cassidy, those guys up front, got to find a way to get to Houston. 
Just bringing four. Usman scrambled a little bit and no. Incomplete. He's trying to hit Borashadi, but Sewell was there and Borashadi hasn't gotten up. The ball was a little bit behind Borashadi on the play. We'll take a look at the replay. Nice job of escaping pressure. But I mean, a, a rare miscue there by Jacob Huseman, as we talked about, usually a very, very accurate quarterback. Had he put that ball out in front of Borashad, he would have been for a catch. But let's hope at this stage that Borashad is okay. You saw him try to plant and twist back on this turf that was installed in 2005. This was the site of the FCS championship game for 13 years. So it's not like they haven't hosted a game in December. They just didn't have mocks in them. Try to see if we can get a key of what the injury is. You know, it looked like maybe Sewell's helmet came maybe. down on the right knee yeah. of Borashadi. It's yeah. hard to really tell, but that's what it looks like to me. And that's why he is favoring that right leg. Coach Durden said Borashadi is their saltiest player. <laughs> he gives them that emotion, he's the fieriness out of the wide receiving core. Yeah, you always got to have that, that guy in your wide receiving core, Ryan. You need that guy that mixes it up and talks a little bit of trash and, you know, blocks a guy late into the whistle at times, and Borsha is their guy. Third down in forever. This is not Chattanooga's M.O. So here we go. Here we see number 55 Underwood moving around. Now he comes down on the left side of your screen. Go, we'll try to take a look. Oh, uh, look does he have control? Though? No, I see the balls popping out. It looks okay. like. It looked like he did get the left foot down, but the ball was being bobbled. I bet we'll take a look at it, and we will. Try to see here. Is he putting the ball away, or is it getting away from him? Ah. It's a tough one. It looked like from the other angle, the ball was popping out, but he was just trying to grasp it but that left foot as you can see is clearly in. inside the white the only question is does he have possession of the football and i from that angle it looks like he did ryan our replay official is jim allison out of the sec he visited with us a little bit earlier today see there's a catch there's a foot down and, and again from that angle it looks like the, the heel may be in but the heel is above the white this is a better shot of it so there's the catch, putting the ball away, the left foot. Looks good. It's pretty good to me. And then the second replay we showed you was where he had the ball. If it didn't pop out or touch the ground, that is what the official trailing the play was running up to talk about. And he's the one that said out of bounds. This is a critical play. Absolutely. If they, go, if they convert on third and 18 here, and Mike Sanford is saying, man, we had him where we wanted him. Hopefully the call stands. One more look at it here. There's the foot down. Awfully close. Awful close. This is, that's how a replay works. I mean, we're talking, we're talking <laughs> four, four blades of fake grass down there. <laughs> They put it up on Mox Vision on the scoreboard. The fans saw exactly that last replay that we ran. Well, as I said, I, I think it looked, his foot was in. The question is, did he have possession of the ball? We'll find out here shortly. And there's Mox Vision. They got to, they get to show it one time on the big board, usually in NCAA games. And, when it takes this long sometimes, See, they're doing clock and they're doing spot. You're doing clock, the spot, field position. Yeah. Look, I think this thing is going to get overturned here. They're going to say he did have possession. He certainly was, as I just said, look to me that his foot was clearly in bounds. There you see, that's all green. Ball in that, in that frame right there looks like it's possessed. 
They, they might have actually got the other foot in Jeff, as well. The other just one to, just didn't need to. Make it definitive, yeah. And I think this is going to get overturned. You got to do that in the pros, but here you just need the one foot. Unfortunately, we can't hear him. Yeah, so how about that? Play. We know the hand signal. That's right. Yeah. yeah. See, they, you know, after looking at it a few times, he, he got his foot down, and after I looked at it another three or four times, the ball was possessed. And how about that? A huge play, Ryan Convert on third and 18. The Sycamores had the mocks where they wanted them, but just a great job there. Coming down with the football. Excellent yeah. play. One heel and Alfonso one, Stewart, yeah. One heel and one toe in. How about that? Alfonso Stewart, a freshman. Nice size, 6'3, 200. Coming up with a big play in his young career. 28 yard catch officially after the replay. So the ball in Sycamore territory at the 42. Give it to the fullback Crane. He'll cut it back in and gain a couple of yards. <laughs> Who else? Mark Sewell is in on the play. Yep. Derek Crane, the fullbacks with a few carries today. Yeah, he came into the, into the, the game here today with just 77 runs on the year. They seem to really be featuring Crane so far today, both in the run and the pass game. Second and eight for the mocks. <laughs> Ball just shy of the 40. Williams. He'll gain about three or so. And we'll have another third down coming up. The mocks have converted twice on third down today, including that last one. A three yard gain officially. Lionel Brown Jr., the defensive back, made the stop. And I'm trying to figure out why the Mocs haven't gone to their 6'5", 250-pound tight end, Fessel Shafak. Mm -hmm. He's a big-time target. We have not called his name once today, Ryan. First team all-conference. Good block. Down the middle. Call! What a catch! Reel it in, and that's Borishani. Back out. After what we think was getting his knee banged on the helmet. Wow, 35 yards. Yeah, he's back, Ryan. I'll tell you what, just a nice job here. Looked like they were in man to man coverage and they run the crossing route that created a little bit of confusion in the back end for Indiana State. And Borashati comes up with a huge play. First and goal, Williams. Stood up and dropped. Kendall Walker, the middle linebacker, made the stop. When you play a lot of man-to-man -man defense, that's what the offense goes to is crossing routes. Try to get those guys either to pick themselves or to not, you know, pass the, the man off to one another, things like that. And Chattanooga did a nice job on that play and clearly got Borashati open. And Houston did a nice job hitting him with the ball. Formation in the boundary here again. Williams spins. Dragging him down to the one. Sewell was hanging on. It'll be third and goal coming up. And you know that Russ Huseman wants to punch this in for the touchdown after getting his last field goal blocked here. Mm. Again, I, I, I'm, I'll say it again. If I'm Chattanooga at some point, I'm finding my big tight end, 6'5", 250, Fessel Shafat. He's been a weapon down here in the red zone. He's at the bottom of that formation. Now they'll run that bulldozer wedge to the left side. Eastman. And this time the Sycamores get him. Yeah, that time they did a little bit. Same play they ran the touchdown on the second touchdown of the game. This time the Sycamores did a little bit better job. A little bit better job adjusting. They had one more guy over there. It was the safety, Mark Sewell, I believe. Along with Underwood. Nice job here. They weren't fooled that time. Going for it on fourth and goal. Big momentum play here either way. Timeout. Called by the Sycamores right before the snap. Yeah, I think Brian Cabral, the defensive coordinator, wants to, wants to make sure they got their guys lined up in the right spot and aren't leveraged again. 
big momentum play coming up here. It'll be fourth and goal from the one yard line. Chattanooga a chance to go up two scores in the final five minutes of the half or Indiana State if they can get a stop. Can try to turn the tables and at least keep them out of the end zone if not try to tie the game before the half ends. Hey look the sun has come out surprisingly. <laughs> Still a little bit windy but temperate. Temps in the 50s today. The forecast a few days ago had rain in a lot of these FCS round two games. And yes, we're, we're in the mountains, so we're a little bit higher in elevation, so the clouds seem to be right on top of this, but. Yeah, really a, a, a cool venue here for no. the stadium. As you said, you got the mountains in the background, you got the city back on another end there, and right smack in the middle of all of this, a really beautiful stadium, in my opinion. Like how it's sunk down there like that. You got the whole the walkway across there, fans there standing. You see a little bit windy today, 10 to 15 miles per hour. This twenty-eight and a half million dollar renovations came in 1996 to this park. And right after that, they got to host the FCS championship game from 97 all the way to 09. It's in Frisco, Texas. Yeah. Now. How about that? If you're Chattanooga for so many years there, the FCS title game is held in your building, but you haven't been in the playoffs. Now this year in 2014, the mocks with a chance to I know the game, the final game won't be played here, but a chance to at least get into the final game here. Let's take a look at this Mr. Fordham game. It's 14 to 12 right now, just before the end of the first half. So again, the number one seed getting challenged. Fordham and the Patriot finally offering some scholarships. Had them in a round two game last year. They got blown out at Towson, so trying to win their first ever round two game. Yeah, Fordham, they got that quarterback, Mike Nebridge. He's 20 and two as a starter, one of the best quarterbacks in the FCS. They got a good O line. And again, they're, they're giving New Hampshire everything they can. Fourth can down. Keep it to the right side. Houston Stymie, does he get in? I don't know. No signal yet. They say down. Inside the one, I don't think he got it over either. Mark Sewell came in. Looked nice job on the penetration there. You see the, the linebacker Thurman, and then you see Sewell come in late. Ryan, he did not cross the goal though no. on that play. Sewell driving those legs with. <laughs> That's my guy, Mark Sewell. I'm telling you, I love watching him play all week. Always around the football, making plays in the passing game, in the run game right there. A huge stop on fourth down on the goal line. And Jacob Huseman, you can see, is just stymied right now. They're going to review this. That, that shot we just saw, that's the shot right there. Try to see from this angle. Legs are churning, legs are churning. I do not see the ball crossing that plane. Anyway, it's not past Sewell. Yeah, and he is in front of the goal line. I agree with the call. I thought so with a naked eye, and I think so again. Yeah, that's going to stand up. That's football right there. That, that is football. That, those last three <laughs> inches, that is the game of football. And what an exciting game. We're getting big pass plays. Mike Paris, we had that, what I don't know, that was a 75-yard 75 75-yard touchdown. Seeing some good old-school running the football, good defense. Fantastic contest going on so far. There's a... Let's take a look one more time here, see if we see anything different here on the third look. You can stop right there again. You see the penetration, Jamar Thurman, number 20, the linebacker, a nice job of getting in the backfield, and then number 21, Mark Sewell coming up. And here comes the rest of the cavalry yanking and pulling on Jacob Houston. I don't see any way that that thing gets turned overturned. Yeah. Yeah. That'll give Sewell his seventh tackle. We just got a shot of the defensive stats up here in the booth. Seven stops for that guy. Yeah. And you know what? Chattanooga has been running the ball with authority coming into this game. The final six regular season games, they're averaging 220 plus yards a game and look good so far early, but right there couldn't punch it in for the touchdown on the goal line. The bad news is your offense has to start at the one, inside the one, and if that penalty 
is on the defense. That's five free yards. It looked like it was 91. Derek Lott, a nice job again by Mike Parrish with the cadence. Offside, defense, it's a yeah. one one. Mm. It's a five yard penalty, it remains, first down. And Ryan, that's one of those plays where the defensive line coach is saying, look guys, we got them pinned back here. Don't jump off sides, don't jump off sides. And for whatever reason, Derek Lott, who's a senior, he knows better than that, jumps off sides and now gives a little breathing room to Indiana State. A sixth year senior, no less. Running around the left side, open in the, out of the backfield, L Logan almost was able to take that to the house. He finally got pulled down by Cedric Nettles. And, and again, Buck Logan, he's normally just the in-between the tackles guys, but look, showing some nice vision on the perimeter, but look at the blocking out in front. He gets 67, Evan Gobel out there. Nice job trying to walk that tight rope there before his foot goes out. Logan Buskey, the tight end, got out there too, and now looks like after a fly. flag, we're going to bring this back. Oh, wow, great run for Buck Logan, all for naught. He's going to be back in the same spot here. First down from the five. I think it's first and six. Didn't get that penalty, but Parrish will throw out of his end zone and he'll throw it away. Trying to go up the far sideline, but his man couldn't separate. That was Gary Owens. And so it'll be second down from the five. So kind of, they took it as a free play there. Let's see if we can go for broke. Yeah, but it was a good job by the secondary. Trevor Wright and Dee Virgin, the cornerbacks, not letting anybody get behind. Them. That's what Adam Braithwright, the defensive coordinator, is saying, look, okay, just keep everything in front of you here. Don't let a wide receiver sneak behind you like earlier. Toss it, I believe that's Jerry Steven. No, it's 32, Lamonte Booker, Josh Freeman, and Derek Lott came up to make the stop. Big third down coming up here. No gain. It was a slow developing play, and Booker didn't really have much to go on. You see the fourth, the third down conversions, they haven't gotten one today. And the guy they've been going to is the guy at the bottom of the screen, number nine, A.J. Johnson. He's been Paris's go-to guy for the deep ball, and also Robert Tanyan. There we see Johnson. Looks like the Mox are going to play zone. Parrish audibles to something. Quick pass, and he overthrows his man. Looking for O'Leary, I believe, number 12. And they'll have to punt from their end zone. Yeah, they ran A.J. Johnson in the seam route up the sideline. Tried to sneak number 12, Chris O'Leary, behind him, but just wasn't the best throw by Mike Parrish. He's going to force a punt. Parrish throwing it at 62% this season. Not bad. Tommy Hudson back to return it. He's standing on his, the Sycamore's 42. There you see him. And get big stop and first and five after the penalty and the Sycamore's can't capitalize. A great job by Chattanooga. A late oh. call for a fair catch. It looked like it hit off a mock helmet. Indiana State says they have it. They came out of the pile with it, and the officials haven't given a signal yet. There was definitely some contact. A lot of players around the the returner. Okay. Kick catching interference. Kicking team number 23. The 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. So he did call for a fair catch and got popped and that gives the ball to the Mox in great field position when we come back. Three touchdowns in the first quarter, nothing here in the second quarter as the defenses have adjusted to what these offenses have decided they should do today. But the Mox take over after the penalty, three yards from the red zone. And a chance to go up two scores before the half, and the Mox will get the ball to start the third quarter. 
Pressure and the first sack of Jacob Huseman in the ball game today. Travis Starks gets credit, bringing him down after the loss of about seven. Yeah, I don't know if we'll get a look at, but it was the cornerback, Travis Starks, coming off the edge. You'll see him coming right into the screen, a corner blitz. As I said, Indiana State, they like to find different ways to bring pressure, and a great call with the corner blitz by the deep coordinator, Brian Cabral, on that one. Patrick McCown was in the backfield as well. Send him back to the 30-yard line. More pressure coming. Keon Williams trying to run out of it. And a nice quick hit. Again, that man, Mark Sewell, he's <laughs> everywhere. And I'll tell you what, Ryan, it doesn't look like Indiana State's doing anything different defensively from a scheme standpoint. It just looks like they've settled in a little bit. Obviously, with what Chattanooga does on offense with all the formations, when you see it live, it, you can kind of be shell-shocking a little bit, in which we saw in the first quarter. But now they've really settled in, and especially that man right there, Mark Sewell, flying around making plays. Eight tackles in the game for Sewell. And this is not unlike their game last week against Eastern Kentucky. Protection for Houston. He's going to try to float it to the end zone. An easy touchdown, Tommy Hudson. His team leading sixth touchdown of the season. And Tommy Hudson got behind the cornerback to Juan Lang on that, who had his eyes back in the backfield watching Houston on the run. 29 yard touchdown. Ribeiro, Ribeiro kicking his third extra point of the game. After the kick catch interference, it's set it up for a short drive, and they got it basically all on one play. The 29 yard touchdown pass from Houston to Hudson, a combination that is connected six times this year. Houston is having himself a day, a rushing touchdown, and this big floater to the end zone. 21-7, an important touchdown for Chattanooga before the half with a couple of minutes left. You play football with your legs, but you can play with your eyes, too. Well, we, yeah, we saw this earlier. The, the problems that Chattanooga creates with the run pass options here, you see Houston rolling out, and as he goes, he, he catches right there. That's number 24, Dewan Lang, with his eyes. Before that, we're in the backfield, and he allowed the receiver, Hudson, to get behind him. It was very similar to the one we saw earlier. And again, when you got a running quarterback, Ryan, a guy who you got to respect on the outside, a lot of times those cornerbacks are, are so hesitant. They want to come up and stop the run. Well, when you do that, you let wide receivers behind you, like Tommy Hudson. Houston hits him, and boy, what a big turn of events right now for the Mops. Houston, 9 for 13. He's thrown to six different receivers. That's his first touchdown of the game. 22 of those this season against seven interceptions. And remember, four of those interceptions came against FBS opponents. Taken at the eight-yard line. They'll run a little fumble, Ruski. They used that play earlier this season as to try to get a score, which they did. They had to use the fumble, Ruski, earlier this season to get the win against Ball State. Yeah, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on, on, on me, right? Look, they try the, the fumble ruski here. They're going to go to the huddle and break out and give the ball there. They look like they gave it to number 17, Ron Rondell Green. But the mocks, you know what? Speed just kills. And the way you stop a play like that is you just have your guys flying around downfield. Instead of standing there looking around who has the ball, just go attack somebody. That's what the mocks did, and they weren't fooled there. Indiana State this quarter has run seven plays for seven yards. And to start inside their own one yard line. And what a turn of events again. Indiana State gets the big stop on fourth down the goal line. They get the penalty. It's first and five. But give credit to the mocks. They stopped and got the ball back and then scored. And now they're just laying the wood on people out there, Ryan. My goodness. Mahasabi Wakil. That's my other absolutely guy. Absolutely <laughs> leveled the ball handler. 
He can't run, he can't bend, he can't do this and that, but all he does is make good decisions and then bang, hit people. Great form tackle here. We'll get another look at this in full speed. You can hear this up in the booth. Bang, right there, good form tackle. The helmet was not a part of the play, he used the shoulder. And how about Joaquin again, a senior, 5'11", 225. And, and I, again, I said it earlier, but I love that. Guys that, you know, Ryan, in my career, I've played with guys that, man, they run a 4'3", 40, and they can jump 42 inches. They can't play football. That guy right there can play football. He doesn't have to get fancy and, and real showy with all his physical skills, but he knows the game, plays hard. Love that linebacker right there. Knock the wind out yeah. of A.J. Johnson. Let's take a look at some of the other scores in the FCS. This is Reasonably close score so far. This is the round tipped away. This is the round where things start to happen. You'll see a lot closer games here in round two. Look at Keonta Davis, 6'4", 250, the sophomore defensive end, getting a big mid up right there, bang. You know, you don't always have to get to the quarterback, Ryan, especially with the way Parrish gets the ball out of his hands quickly. So what you do, how you counteract that, you have the defensive line get their hands up. That's as good as a sack right there. Davis, 10 and a half tackles for loss, five and a half sacks, proving his medal, knocking that one down, forcing another punt for Ume on his own goal line. End over end kick, caught and buried. He didn't call for the fair catch, surrounded by Sycamores. Could have gotten himself hurt on that play. Yeah, Tommy Hudson is going to want to either call fair catch or get away from that one. That was a little dicey there. But that puts the mocks. Another drive starting on Sycamore's territory at the 42. This is about the same yard line they would have had last time had it not been for the Kit Kat interference penalty. And they scored quickly, and they've got a buck nine in which to try to get it to a three score margin. Huseman nine completions to six different receivers. Shafat goes in motion and sets up on the right side. Now they'll send Hudson around the formation. Huseman's just gonna run it himself. Lots of space. He'll get almost a first down on a first down carry. Give him eight yards with Donovan Lane making the stop. Again, they get you thinking, they trade the tight end, send the wide receiver in motion, you're thinking about this, that, and the other, and it's just a simple run up the middle by the quarterback for eight yards. Usman throws it away the first time he was actually throwing it at Shafat in the ball game. The third down and two, the first kick of the season for Ribeiro in the Central Michigan game was for 47 yards. Yeah, you're going to have to get about another four yards here, Ryan, if he's going to match his career long. He got the job by hitting a 56-yarder in practice with guys in his face. And they'll get close. It's going to be very close to the first down. Underwood did make the stop of Houston. They're either going to measure or send the sticks forward, but they'll stop the clock either way. I think he's going to be short. They'll measure this. It's going to be close. It looked like it was short, maybe a little bit more favorable of a spot than I originally thought. But if it is fourth down, it's going to be a career long on the field goal attempt for Ribeiro. 43 seconds. Would you just go for it if you need a yard with this team? That was 43. I'd put it up okay. and try to kick the field goal here. It looks like he came down. And there's the spot. It is awfully close. Got it. Wow, by the by the, the little phrase on the on the stitching of the football. They get the first down and gonna keep this drive going here. The mocks do have one timeout left. And obviously, you know, in college football, if you get the first down, the clock will stop temporarily. Usually to go to the air. He wants all of it. Just overthrows 
the man he hit the touchdown for just a few minutes ago, Hudson, trying to hook up for the second time in the end zone today. Yeah, they ran Hudson on the wheel route there, but that was a nice job by Rodell Green of rolling with the wheel route. You got the guy in the flat, but a lot of times those defenders will allow on the wheel route for the wide receiver to get back vertical going up the field. Green did a nice job not being fooled. Stay with us at the half. We've got some fun stuff coming up. We <laughs> blast from the past. We take you on a tour of 1984. <laughs> the last time both these schools were in the playoffs. How about that? That's going to be that's, that's going to be a fun one. We put together some neat stuff. Can't wait to share it with you coming up at the half. But before then, Houston and company want to get one more score. He's got some space. He's going to run for the sideline and get out of bounds with 24 seconds left. A first down run inside the 10 to the 8. 24 yards. And that's the problem with playing man-to-man -man defense versus a running quarterback, because everybody on defense has their back turned and you allow a dual threat, great running quarterback in Jacob Houston to pick up huge yardage. You, you see a lot of Sycamores, they have their eyes back on their wide receiver coming right there into your screen as Huseman. That's what makes it so tough. You, you tend to play more zone defense versus a running quarterback, because again, those defenders have their eyes back on the quarterback. They went man-to-man -man and Houston burned them. The savvy of that veteran, that junior getting out of bounds so that they can call some plays as well. That, that's critical, absolutely. Eastman, designed run. They'll get inside the five to the four. 18 seconds left. They have the timeout and they will call their last timeout. Kendall Walker made the stop number 10. That's him. What do you got? You got 15 ticks left, Rocky. What do you think here with at the four yard line with a running team? Well, if you got 15 ticks left, you, you have definitely have two shots to the end zone here. Well, or, well, yeah, with being second down, you have a second down shot and a third down shot. So uh, enough time. Usually you figure about four to five seconds per play here, especially if you go quick to the outside parts of the field here. Enough time for a couple shots and then the field goal if you can't get in. And remember, the Mox won the coin toss and deferred, so they'll get the ball first in the third quarter, and they'd much rather get it with a 28-7 lead and then 21-7. Indiana State's got to shore some things up. I, I don't defensively, what can you do? I mean, they throw so many things at you. And they were doing a good job for a while there. You know, Mike Stanford for a while, they had to be pretty happy with the way his defense was playing, swarming the ball, but just really been a, a couple big plays here, a couple big plays there. It's been a difference. You spent 136 yards passing, 85 yards running, and the Mocs have 302 total yards in the first half. Nobody's open. Houston's going to wisely throw it away. That burned off six, six ticks. seconds. Yeah, it took Houston's a little bit longer to develop. Now nine seconds. Still one shot if you do it quick. Yeah, the most important thing for Jacob Houston, he cannot take a sack right here. Yeah, the clock will continue to run, and they no don't time have outs. any timeouts. They have put up 500 plus yards three times this year, averaging 390 per game. And already over the 300 yard mark in the first half. And remember their first drive started on the three. They only needed three for that one. And I go to Tommy Hudson there. He's man to man down toward the bottom of your screen. Take a shot with him. Indiana State. Timeout. Indiana. That's their second charge team timeout of the first half. Sycamores got a look at the formation before the snap. And this is a situation where if you had more time, I think you would, you'd like to be able to roll Houston out, give him the run pass option. But with just nine seconds, I don't know if you can take that risk here. I think you've got to try to take a shot for with a fade route or a quick pass into the end zone. If not, leave a few seconds left for the field goal. Coach Houston is not going to call this play. This is definitely coming from Coach Durden. Yeah, this is the last player. Look, just a good job by Indiana State covering everybody up. You see Houston rolling to the left. Everyone right here is hat on a hat, man on a man. Account for everybody. And just a nice job here of not allowing anybody open. Houston smartly really just throws that ball away. Good job by Indiana State. Four white shirts and three blue shirts. And there's Jeff Durden. One to 
national title as the offensive coordinator at James Madison here on this field in 2004. And four years later, Coach Huseman won the national title with Richmond on this field. Third and goal, they'll go for the corner out. Caught and loosed of the ball at the last second. Alex Stowers, number 39, worked it out of the hands of the intended receiver in the corner. What a nice job. They had C.J. Board, just like we talked about, with a fade to the back of the end zone. Has it, but not to be denied. Just stays with the play. Watch this. I love it. Doesn't get his eyes back, but right there, the left hand. A really good job by Stowers of just not giving up on that play. Because if he doesn't stay with that play and just allows him to accept that catch there, it's a touchdown and a big-time deficit. Good job by the defensive back, the junior Alex Stowers. Oh, he missed it. He missed it right. It was too close. So the mocks on the last wow. play of the half. Ribeiro has not missed one from that close. The longest miss he's had was 33. So in the last play of the half, they come away with no points. And Coach Huseman is not happy with that result. 21 to 7, the Mocs seeking their first FCS playoff win in their first ever game in December. The winner gets to the quarterfinals next week. A great first half. We still have two more quarters to go. Before that, a lot of halftime shenanigans here from Finley Stadium. Buddy, welcome back, Ryan Rose. And Former Super Bowl winner Rocky Boyman, a fun first half. Three of the touchdowns came in the first quarter, and then just one touchdown in the second quarter. Quick, uh, quick, quick game so far. I think. Yeah, well, Chattanooga jumped out to 14-0, and he looked like they were going to roll Indiana State back into it. But for the most part, Chattanooga in, in control of this one. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. We're going to take a look at mostly the touchdowns. Yeah, well, Chattanooga got the early turnover and then capitalized very quickly. Keon Williams with a short touchdown run, and then Jacob Huseman took it in himself. 14 to nothing, Chattanooga. But then just when it looked like Indiana State was going to get run out of here, Mike Paris with a 75 yard touchdown pass to keep them in the game. Got it to 14 to 7, and then late, Chattanooga answered with a touchdown of their own to Hudson in the back of the end zone. Chattanooga 21 to 7. Let's take a look at the stats in the first half. Uh, things started to get away from the Sycamores, particularly in the second quarter. But you look at that, 301 first half yards for the Mox. Just the one turnover in the game, and the Mox really possessed the ball well. Yeah, I think Chattanooga has to do better is be better in the red zone. They're just 2 of 5. They missed that field goal right there as time ran out in the first half. Got to be better in the red zone in the second half. The Stars, the quarterbacks in the game, this is what they've done so far. Parrish, just 4 of 12, not having a Parrish like day he has the pick early he did throw the touchdown pass but they've got to get him going in this second half well they do but Chattanooga's defense is really playing solid they're covering up the wide receivers not really giving a parish any room to throw the ball and plus getting a little bit of pressure in his face Jacob Houston has been more deadly on the ground today versus in the air he's got to have a great second half to cap this game you can see he accounts for 220 of those 301 wow what a day for those two guys and they've got to really get things cranked up in the second half, at least Mike Parrish does. Mox only got three first downs in that first half. But you remember, Indiana State last week, the third quarter was huge versus Eastern Kentucky came out. They had the 24 points unanswered in the third quarter. Does Mike Parrish and the Sycamores have another little bit more magic left here in this season? They reeled off 33 points in the second half against Eastern Kentucky at EKU. So if you're Mike Sanford, you got him right where you want him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something like that, right? Yeah. Got that missed field goal right at the end of the half. A surprising one. It was just a 25-yarder. And how about this? Ribeiro was 12 of 12 to start the season. First nine games. Since then, he's just three for seven. And the thing you notice, running off the field, Russ Houston, the head coach, was giving Ribeiro an earful. You can't think that's got to do and you know help his confidence here in the rest of the game. Kickoff coming out to the 16-yard line as Jameer Thurman was trying to get things going. 
Let's take a look at the pass chart for Jacob Huseman in the first half. A lot of things going to the right, which is where the junior and the senior on that offensive line are, Morgan and Mays. Yeah, and, and that's where he's found Tommy Hudson, their best wide receiver here so far today, is mostly on the right side of the field. Spreading the ball around, which is very typical of this style of offense, but again, Houston really getting it done on the ground. Through to six different receivers in that first half. And he'll have it first down and 10. Give it to Williams around the left side. Stymied there, no gain. And you got to know that with Underwood making that stop, you got to know the paint was probably peeled off the walls in that Indiana State locker room in halftime with what those guys got told. Yeah, they're getting ready to go up 24 to 7, had the easy field goal that Rivera missed. And just, you know, obviously they got a two score lead here, but to go up by three scores would have been huge. Again, Mike Sanford uh, is going to look to try to have a third quarter like he did last week. Four yard loss. Didn't see a lot of those in the first half. Houston's going to run it. Just a sliver of space, and he makes something positive out of it. Underwood again, two tackles on two plays already here in the third quarter. Now we saw, and you can watch the replay of that whole first round game. I know both of us did. They ran tempo on Eastern Kentucky in the third quarter last week. But if they can't get the ball, they can't run the tempo. Well, that's the thing. This is a critical third down here, third and seven. They've got to try to get the ball back to their offense so they can try to have a big day. Go back against the play. Shafat, his first catch of the game, and he'll have a first down. Finally got it to the tight end. Fassel Shafat, he and his 18 career touchdowns. Donovan Lane made the stop. Yeah, I was begging for it all first half, Ryan. Finally, they get their big target involved. Look, everything goes to the right, and they leak the fullback, Shafat, back to the left with a lot of running room. And you can see Shafat, he, he's more of a, of a wide receiver than, than a tight end kind of guy. I'll tell you what, again, big target, six foot five, 250 pounds. I think he can be key here in the second half. 14 for that first down. Houston will run it again. Across midfield, finally brought down by Lane and Travis Starks, but not before a big gainer for a first down over on the 48-yard line. Look at this hole that Jacob Houston has to run through here. You get the fullback, you see Tyson there with a critical block and allows Houston just enough room to squeak through. Look, doesn't have to look pretty. You just got to occupy that guy long enough, and then you see down the field, there's number nine, the wide receiver, Afonso Stewart, blocking downfield, allowing his quarterback to pick up just a few more yards. It was a 20-yard game. Houston is over 100 yards on the ground. Underwood makes the stop of Williams, but another positive gain for the Mox offense. They got almost nine yards on that play. Just chewing up the yardage. Chewing up the clock as well. That's remember that's we talked about the first half. What they do, they like to shorten the game for their defense. I believe they had 19 minutes of offensive possession in the first half and on their way here in the second. Take that jet sweep, Houston again. We asked his dad, who happens to be the head coach, what, what how would you describe Jacob? He's a tough guy. Yeah, he just said he loves his toughness. A guy that I mean, he runs the ball, he takes hits, he never shies away from contact. It doesn't like to slide too much. Remember, you talked about how he did slide once a couple years ago and wound up skinning his leg up really bad. He said, hey, Dad, I'm just going to take it the old fashioned way from here on out. He dives. And... A lot of his dad's toughness. His dad was a defensive back here. He won a conference but didn't get a berth. Tied for the conference lead back when he played here. They get CJ Board for a completion. Well, they're going to talk about it. No signal yet. No, out of bounds. They say out of bounds. Another tight play on the sideline. He tried to hit board along the sideline. Oh. Looks like is the left foot down as he made the catch here? Let's get a look at from this angle. There's the ball. There's the catch. It looked like the very front of that toe of the left toe could have been dragging that line. Take one more look. There's a catch. It's hard to see on that one. Yeah, going back to your story on Houston, he said 
Well, let's take another look here. Yeah, this is going to be the best angle. There's the catch, and there it looks like the left foot's down. The, the right foot is out of bounds, but it has not touched the outside part of the field yet, which would make him still in. And just outside the outstretched arms there, that looks like the left foot is down. Only one foot has to be in in college football. And if he had possession, it should be a catch. C.J. Board, who is their deep threat, tiptoeing on the sidelines. Really That'd be another great sideline completion because the first one was ruled out and replay showed it was in. Yeah, that one was to uh, to Borashadi, I believe. Yeah. Remember that was a third and 18, really a critical point to wind up scoring on that play. 28 yard catch on third and 18. Yeah. There's your cleanest shot, and it certainly does look like he's in. Yeah, there's clearly possession of the ball, and there's the left toe down the right foot again is over top of the out of bounds line. Coach Usman said he doesn't really stick his head in the quarterback meetings and, and, and let me say this real quick Ryan, not yeah. to cut you off but remember last time they took this long uh, mm -hmm. Talking about the play and it was overturned. You, you have to think that this is what's going to be the case here. They're finding out where the yard markers are. And going to overturn After further it. review, the UTC receiver did get a, flay, a foot down. The result is a first and 10 from the 18 yard line, a completed catch. So, for two first down replays today. Yeah, two for two on the day for the mocks, and they've been. Critical plays. That one was on second down. Going to move the sticks, pick up a first down. We talked about the one earlier. It was on third and 18. Kept that drive going. Wanted getting points out of it. We shout out again to our replay official, Jim Allison, out of the Southeastern Conference. He had nothing but great things to say about this Patriot League officiating crew. Getting used to using the replays. Not a ton of TV games for that league. But exciting for those guys to get some postseason work as Williams is taken down in the backfield for a loss of four. Alec Lyons, number 47, made the stop. Indiana State did just a nice job of penetration there. Brady Collins, number 50, from that end position, did a good job getting upfield and stopping the running back and stopping his momentum. Had to reverse field. And that caused a loss of yardage. Four yards. Tackle for loss. There's Collins. You saw Lyons also credited with the stop a second ago. Second and 14. Usman will keep it. And he'll get hit at the 20 and makes the pile fall forward to the 22. Brady Collins again with the stop. And remember, Ryan, I talked about they do, uh, the mocks like to do a lot of formation into the boundary. We've seen it. We've seen it all, all game here. Again, they do the same thing. It really is hard for those defenders to adjust from an alignment standpoint into the boundary. There's just, I just remember as a former player, there's lots of different nuances to that. So it's not something you see all the time where the other team, the offense, will put a lot of their wide receivers into the boundary. So again, they, the mocks try to position themselves just to out leverage the defense and done a pretty good job of that today. Mox having their worst day in the red zone, just two for five. And it looks like Chattanooga wants to burn a timeout here. They were going to run out of play clock time, so they had to call that timeout to avoid a penalty on third and long. And that would have pushed them out of the red zone. Just two successful scores in the red zone. Their first two, the last three, they had a kick blocked. They missed the field goal at the end of the half. And, and, and that's turned what's, it over on downs. Yeah, that's what's key is Russ Usman knows that his field goal kicker has, has had one block and also had one missed early right there, excuse me, late there in the second quarter. And he's got to be thinking, look, we've got to pick this thing up and try to get the first down here because there's not a, lot of, not a lot of confidence in the kicker. Yeah, 13 points left on the scoreboard because, or left off the scoreboard because of these plays. The first one was blocked. Yeah, that was McCown getting through, busting through and blocking the first one, number 97. And this one here, didn't look like. 
too close. Yeah, it was a little bit too close. Maybe the bad angle there, but you got to think Ribeiro has that in his head right here. So again, Russ Houston is going to really want to pick this thing up and keep his offense on the field. He has only two misses this year, 33 and 37. So head scratching misses. Out of the backfield, give it to Crane inside the 10, popped and dropped at the one by Mark Sewell, but a first and goal coming up for the Mox. 17 yards on the pass play to Crane. And if you run a spread offense, the wide receivers have to block. Watch who, what springs the play right there. That's number 86, CJ Board. Watch this, continue to block. Allowing some extra room for Crane. That's a nice job. That is Russ Houston football right there. Wide receivers springing those backs for some extra yards, Ryan. Crane in motion. Houston going to run it in himself. His second rushing touchdown of the day. And the mocks go up by 20. Touchdown run of the season for Houston. He's two behind Keon Williams. Extra point up and good. It took a replay assist to complete an 18 yard pass play on the sidelines to CJ Board. And then he helps on the blocking of that play, which led to the touchdown, an 84 yard drive goes to fund cancer research. I remember that too and I saw the 30 for 30 on Jimmy V. What an amazing, just they didn't think he was going to be able to do that speech. Balls on the turf. Indiana State picks it up. on special teams, picks it up and takes it to the house. What an unbelievable play. And it looked like the return man, as he gave up the ball, he lost his helmet. The ball pops out. That's the weirdest kick return for touchdown I've ever seen. Yeah, there's Lamonte Booker taking the kick. And right about here, he's going to get popped. But the ball gets fumbled forward. And then Johnny on the spot there. Jordan Wallace picks it up and rumbles into the end zone. Lamonte Booker was back on, the, on his back on the field. His helmet had popped off. There was another Sycamore lane on the field who's getting some help. Number 40, Jess Harris. But Jordan Wallace takes it in for the touchdown. And I'll tell you what, we talked about earlier, but Indiana State is not going to go quietly in tonight here. A 64-yard fumble return for touchdown. Off the fumbled kick return. And so far, the Sycamore's two scores have come on a 75-yard pass and a 64-yard fumbled kickoff return for touchdown. This is the wackiest kick return score you will ever see. It's a two-score game. In round one to Eastern Kentucky and storm back to score 36 points to finish the game. And they kind of look like they might be doing it here. Yeah, it was kind of the same thing. Eastern Kentucky early on, just total control of that game. Went up 16 to nothing. Looked like Indiana State was going to get blown out of the stadium. But then in the third quarter, they got the win and had 24 unanswered points on that quarter. 36 unanswered on the day. Mike Parrish just lit up the Colonels. And here we are, Ryan. Look, we kind of maybe a similar situation here. Again, Indiana State will not quietly go away with the really the one of the wackier plays I've seen this year in college football. A fumble on the kickoff goes forward. Mike Wallace, or, uh, Wallace picks it up, takes it in for the touchdown. Now just a two-score game. FCS playoffs, man, there's nothing like it. I had a game two years ago at Appalachian State where Illinois State blocked the extra point in overtime to win. 
special teams. This one, did it go out of bounds or go in the end zone? It went in the end zone for the touchbacks. So this will come out to the 25. You won't see a score on a kick return as weird as this one. No, again, here's Booker taking it up the field here and just a nice look at that. Bunch of hats on the football and hardly anyone sees it until right there at the end, Jordan Wallace picks it up. Jordan Wallace is a linebacker doing a great job looking like a running back. Again, one of the wackier plays. And there were about two or three sycamores that were down on the field. Looked like they, they were down there. Looked like they were a little bit injured or something. And again, just a crazy play to find a way to quickly kind of get back in this game. The mock score, and then nine seconds later, the sycamores get a score back. So that offense back out on the field, and Houston will run it himself and gain a couple on first down from the 25 yard line. Neither of these teams have ever been to the third round, ever been to the quarterfinals before. And Ryan, you mentioned it uh, from a clock standpoint. Chattanooga's clearly dominated this game. Indiana State's had the two quick scores. Yeah, 75 yard touchdown pass. And that return, fumble return of 64 yards. But other than that, it's been all mocks. Up the middle again, nothing there. Matter of fact, the Sycamores don't have a third down converter. They're 0 for 6. There's Mike Sanford, the head coach for the Sycamores. He was actually the quarterback coach my freshman year at Notre Dame. Got to know Mike a little bit, and we talked a little bit this week about some of the some of the good old days there in South Bend. But what a great coaching career he's had. Turning this team around last year went 1 and 11. Got things turned back around, found a way to get into the playoffs. He was the OC at Utah State at Louisville. Utah, Stanford, he's, he knows offense. And they got to figure it out today. Here's a sack. And it's Mike, Mark Sewell. We're going to wear out his name today. He's been everything as he knocks down Bagley in the backfield. Yeah, here's a, here, there's, there's Mark Sewell coming from this side. As we see, he just goes in and strings the play out. There he is, comes in late, fights off the block by the offensive lineman and brings Keon Williams down to the ground. We, we've talked about it all game. Love watching Mark Sewell play. Very active in the run game. That time with a critical play port, forcing the punt. Going for the kicker, almost hit him. A low kick. And I thought maybe the special teams unit might come up with another big play, but they'll set up. The Sycamores in great starting field position at the 43. I think their best starting field position of the day after the 39 yard punt. It's been a long time since these two teams made the FCS playoffs. We just reelected Ronald Reagan. <laughs> the Gipper. About a month Love before. It. There's your boy Eddie Murphy. He's actually still making movies, but those were classics. Now there's a there. classic when Doves Cry Prince. He was a legend back then, and then the, the introduction of the Mac computer, which has virtually taken over the entire world doesn't look here any, in 2014. It doesn't look anything like my MacBook Pro now. <laughs> That's right. Muhasabi Wakil with the stop on that first down run by Buck Logan. 28-14, here is what the two teams have done in the third quarter. One play for Indiana State and seven points. It's pretty efficient. <laughs> One play and seven points. It's just like what they did last week. They had the wind at their back of about 20 mile an hour win in Eastern Kentucky and ran tempo. They just sped up the game on EKU. Let's see yeah. if they can do that here. And they kind of got the wind to their back a little bit here. Obviously last week it was about a 20 mile an hour win, 25 miles per hour. Not quite that today, but Maybe uh, again here a week later to help them out in the passing game. Looking for their first third down conversion of the day. And they get it. And they're into Mox territory at the 45. Looks like they hit Gary Owens over there. Yeah, Keani he, Harris, yeah. I'm sorry, three, not four. And he caught it at the 45 for the first down. They've got to get him more involved in this game. I'll say both Keanu Harris and Gary Owens, number three and number four, some explosive wide receivers. Here comes Harris on the end of the round. Jet sweep there. Give it to him. Owens. Owens. 
An all newcomer, honorable mention all Missouri Valley. Lucas Webb came up 29 to make the stop, so a modest gain on first down, give him two yards. And how about Gary Owens? His high school quarterback was none other than TCU quarterback Trayvon Boykin. How about that down in Mesquite, Texas? Catching passes from Boykin was, was Owens there back in the day, and now helping out Mike Parrish and the Sycamores. That's an unfair high school combination. <laughs> They'll go for the deep ball. A lot of contact going down the sideline, but number three, D. Virgin, staying in coverage. A.J. Johnson was trying to make a case for some contact here. He still has. He said, hey, Virgin had his arms wrapped around him. Another third down. They've got their first one of the day. Two plays, three plays to go. One for seven. Owens is to the bottom of your screen, number four. He's usually their, he's their most explosive wide receiver on that team. We'll see if Parrish goes there. He's going to call timeout. Ran out of play clock time. Had to burn the timeout there. Critical play to try to rush it. Don't disagree with that call. The first time out taken by Indiana State this half. The third quarter that has flown by. Each team with a score here in the third. 28-14, more importantly, a big third down play for head coach Mike Sanford and quarterback Mike Parrish on the other side of this break. lead for Chattanooga but a big third down here for Indiana State. They got their first third down conversion earlier in this drive. Need this one. They're going for the deep ball looking for Owens. He dropped it. He had it in his hands and it went right through his hands and he knows it. I thought so the, guy, the guy they would go to was Owens and he had it. Goes right through his hands there toward the end. Nice job. Clearly enough protection. Parrish put the ball up in the air. Ball goes right through his hands. Oh, that's you gotta one. come down with that. That's one that Owens would love to have back to take a gamble. They go for the home run there on third and seven. There's Mike Sanford consoling Gary Owens on that play because he knows he just dropped a big one. And there's 20 more minutes of football. He knows he'll need him later in this game if they're going to come away Absolutely. with a victory. The kick takes a mox bounce into the end zone, and so Chattanooga will get the ball back after a big stop on third down. Chattanooga right now would love to just have their offense just do what they've done most of the game and that's chew up this clock keep it on the ground and get this game into the fourth quarter and beyond. They've done a great job possessing the football in the game today running a lot of different formations confusing the Indiana State defense and that man right there. A season high, a buck 23 on the ground to go with 183 passing. He hasn't been quite as efficient passing the ball as he has been. We talked about him 68%, but again, doing it with his legs. He gives himself up there for a loss of a couple. Jameer Thurman, the linebacker, all Midwest, well, excuse me, Missouri Valley football. For the loss. All academic, I should say. Yeah, how about smart guy. So Jameer Thurman, 3.7 in civil engineering, and his counterpart, the other linebacker, Kendall Walker, a 3.5 in sports management. Who, who says linebackers don't have brains, man? Look huh? at you. <laughs> Sticking up for your boys. That's right. Well, they've been able to diagnose that play. And Williams almost taken down in the backfield, figures out a way to gain two with Patrick McCown on the stop. Let's look and see how they got that play. Yeah, it looked like right here it was Alec Lyons coming in, getting the penetration. There he is, number 47. Nice job slipping the block, getting in the backfield, coming to balance. And here comes the cavalry. Force him back inside. We've been bragging on the mocks. 
A negative play and then a two yard gain. So they've got third and long here as well. Eastman will be dragged down shy of the 35 and they'll have to kick it away. Conlon Cassidy. Made the stop. A couple plays in a row the deep into your defensive line. Getting in the backfield for some 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 disruption. Alex Lyons on the play before that time it was Conlon Cassidy. Coach trying to fire him up. Coach Houston not liking what he's seeing. Momentum. These coaches know how important it can be. Low quick kick. Gets all the way down to the 32 and a half yard line. They wouldn't let Sewell return it. A 43 yard kick. A low liner that keeps bouncing in. And, Coach and Houston's Houston getting upset. mad. He he expected. He thinks a penalty should have been called right here on holding. Face mask. Wow, yeah. look at that. I mean, clearly that's plain as day. D Lyman had his hand wrapped around the face mask of Jacob Huseman. Yeah, he, he definitely has a case on that one. They usually don't miss that call. Huseman, a slow burn going on down there. He let his fire out a little bit, and now <laughs> you can see it in his belly. First down play for the Sycamores. Taylor with the football, Dimitri Taylor, number 31, yes. And he'll get a decent gain up to the 37. Run a little tempo here. Move it quickly. A.J. Johnson, the catch, trying to get things going. This is what they tried to have to do in the third quarter last week. Is get the tempo going for Mike Parrish, the quarterback, as... It's been quite a, different, off, yeah. quite a different story. Last week, 41 of 57, 408 in the air. And you got to give them this mock defense a lot of credit. They've made him a little bit uncomfortable back there, but really it's been the secondary, that young secondary for the mocks. It has a bunch of freshmen and a couple of sophomores have done a good job covering up these wide receivers, not giving him any lanes to throw the ball. They said they got to move him off his spot. That would knock down another good play by the secondary. That's actually the uh, dime. Back. So a light flag, Kendall, though. And a flag pours in late to see if he had a hand around his back. Yeah, they may say that Kendall had his left hand on the back of the wide receiver. Pass interference. Defense number 16. The 15 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Coach Houston's head might actually explode. Well, I don't know. I saw that in the corner of my eye here. We'll take a look at the replay. As the ball is getting there, see, it looked like the left arm was yeah. already wrapped around the wide receiver. Here's the call. Here's the better look. There's the left arm just before the ball gets there. It hooked him. And it, and it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't huge, but it was clearly a penalty on Kendall. And wow, what a big break for the Sycamores. They get the first down. Correction. The penalty assessed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Yeah. So it's inside 15 yards, so you put it where the foul happened. Put it at the 45. First and 10 for the Sycamores. I believe that's their first first down off of a penalty today. The pass to Owens. His third catch of the game nettles the quick tackle. And that's a key here playing defense against the Sycamores is they're going to complete some passes, but when they do, no yards after the catch. And that man right there, 35, Cedric Nettles, we've seen him do that all day, Ryan. Shot out of a cannon in that secondary. Nice job tackling the wide receiver, no yards after the catch. Spread him out, trips to the left side of the formation. Little screen pass. Nothing. Back to the line of scrimmage, maybe lose a half yard. D. Virgin came up the right boundary corner to make the stop. Loss of a yard. And this secondary is flying around right now. We saw Nettles the play before, and then right there you see D. Virgin came up, shot his gun. He waited for the rest of his boys to get there. They need seven yards. Another big third down. They seem to be in third and long quite a bit. Trying to go down. 
field, swarmed under. Nikavion Leslie got there first. Daniel Ring was also there. And Keontae Davis didn't want to get left out of the meeting. And what an excellent play call by Adam Braithwaite. Adam Braithwaite, the defensive coordinator. They bring the pressure, they bring Nettles off the edge, and then also you see Nikavion Leslie, number five, looping a dual blitz off the left side of the formation defensively. Great job. I love the play call again. This defense isn't by, by rule that active in terms of lots of blitzes, but they call them here and there. That was definitely the right time to call that play, forcing the punt. Bobbled and finally collected around the 10-yard line. It was a nine-yard loss on the sack. Tommy Hudson finally got a fair catch called for a two-score lead for Chattanooga as the Mox finally get the big sack. They have been scoring in bunches today. Students back in, you get a little atmosphere. It's awesome. They're fired up. First playoff game in 30 years. Look at this. They got the coordinated chance going. This guy here, he looks like the uh, the fireman up there in, in New York the, for the Jets, getting those crowd going with all the choreographed cheers. Sycamore's going to have to play some defense in a hurry as we start the fourth quarter. They held Chattanooga to a punt on its last drive and get a negative one on this first play of the fourth quarter on a new possession for the Mox. Yeah, Chattanooga taking more negative plays than you've really seen most of the year. And there's some talent on the other side of that football team. Houston with time trying to go up the sidelines. Thought maybe that the Sycamores would wrangle a 16th interception of the season trying to hit Shafat. Too many men in coverage, including number seven, Travis Starks. Yeah, Travis Starks, a little bit of a size disadvantage there. Starks just five foot ten, Shafat six foot five, but a nice job of body position, plus the throw was just a little bit out of bounds. Sycamore's two scores coming on huge plays, a 75-yard touchdown pass and a 64-yard fumbled kick return in the positive way. Their own kick return. More methodical scoring for the Mox. Houston on third down. He's going to send it down the middle of the field. What a catch! Holy smoke! CJ Board with men draped on him, wrangled it in. What a catch in traffic. Both Rod Al Green, number 17, and number 21, Mark Sewell, were in the vicinity. And Huseman just throws this up and says, hey, C.J. Board, come make a play for me. Nice job. Look at the elevation. Eyes back on the football and the concentration hauling that ball in. Wow, what a play in double coverage for C.J. Board. 49 yards. 48 yards officially. Up the middle, stuffed. Alec Lyons, Conlon Cassidy in there. CJ Board made the catch, that replay overturned for a completed catch to set up their last score, their only score of the second half, and then makes that big one for 48. Yeah, they've made a couple just critical plays on third down. Just like that one there to keep the sticks moving. That was a sensational grab, jumping up and hauling that one in with two guys draped around him. On third down and 11. Eastman keeps it. Still dives forward. He was stymied for only about three or four and then figured out a way to make eight yards out of it. This tough guy is just the heart and soul of this offense. You just can't bring him down. You know, and again, it's, it's, it's his toughness, it's his understanding of the game, being being the, the son of a coach. Mike Sanford, Indiana State's coach, said this week, I hate playing against the sons of coaches because they know football, and clearly Jacob Houston knows how this game is played. Send it around the right side of the formation. This is Bagley, all-freshman team. 
think a late flag came out. Ricardre Bagley, 5'9", 180 with the flag popping out late. Kendall Walker, the tackle. Personal foul, block below the waist. Offense, number 41. It's a 15 yard penalty. It remains third down. Derek Crane, the fullback, sends them back instead of a first down. Wow, that's critical. It looks like Derek Crane decides to go. Here it is right there coming in your screen. Just gets just a little bit below the, the belt line there. And these officials don't want to see guys going and attacking guys' legs there. Well, it's a safety issue. College yep. football is really concerned about that, particularly when you're not able to look and see guys coming yeah, at where you. Yeah, the, where the hit is coming from, yeah. So it'll be third and long again. Third and 13. Usman got men in the pattern. This one caught. It might be short of a first down. It is short by a couple of yards, finding Alfonso Stewart. Underwood had some pressure. This is in that gray area here, Ryan, where, you know, it doesn't make much sense to punt the ball away a little bit too far for your field goal. I think they're going to try to go for this. And they need three yards. They converted a fourth down play in the first half. Could not get the score on fourth and goal. Today, one for two. Give it to the freshman. He's got it. Ricardre Bagley moves the chains. I'll tell you what, the speed of Bagley looks like he confused the linebackers. Yeah, just misses him right there. He didn't really, you know, didn't really see the handoff. And before, by the time he diagnosed it there, Bagley with his speed was out around the edge, and that was like stealing. Garrick Ratliff unable to force it back inside. So two for three on fourth downs. And when you're fourth and three, you just have so many options. You don't know what to expect. They don't have any tendencies in those scenarios. Well, and especially this offense, we've talked about it all game. You don't know what, what play they're going to go with, who they're going to attack with. So many different guys, they get this, this, they get involved on offense. And that time they allow Begley to get outside first down. They don't run a bunch of different plays, but they do run them out of a bunch of different formations. You can't really guess or have a key to read for these guys when they when they do what they do. 2010 North Dakota State, the two seed has won the last three. And you see basically just five teams have won the last 10 titles. And how about App State? They had those three straight victories. They this year move, make the move to the FBS level and came in third in the Sun Belt. How about yeah, that? They got six wins and became bowl eligible, except they weren't allowed to go to a bowl because of their transition rules. And here's Chattanooga. Grinding this clock, they started the possession at the start of the fourth quarter. And now they'll have it for five minutes or so. And a touchdown here might just salt this one away. Being clearly just taking as much time off the clock as they can, letting that play clock get down. That's what they've done so well this entire season. But Crane carry it. He'll push the foul forward to the 10 and a first down. Mark Sewell made the stop. Eight yards for the carry. And I believe they'll be, uh, yep, nose of the football on the 10, so first and goal. And you can see Houston, he's not snapping this ball until there's five seconds left on the play clock. Smartly letting that clock just bleed away. Yeah, they're huddling up and everything. Let the fans in attendance enjoy the first home playoff win in school history. Houston with a flag down. His teammate pulls him into the end zone. That this one's probably not going to count. Holding offense number 52. 
The 10 yard penalty, it will remain first down. It's the center, Jacob Revis. Yeah, I didn't, didn't see the foul. And as we see, there's number 52 as he goes out there, just gets his arm wrapped around. Yep. Yeah, I see him bringing the linebacker down to the ground. That's going to bring the penalty. See he grabbed Conlon Cassidy, a fistful of jersey there. Revis, the second Jacobs blocking award winner. He's been doing a great job all day long. The second one since 83 for the Mobs. Mike Neese in 83. Eastman rolls, fires, and Bagley's got it, but he'll take a loss. Sewell, the stop. No gain. And Ryan, you brought up a great point earlier, and that is the fact that Chattanooga is huddling. They're an up-tempo team like you see so many teams across the country. But the problem a lot of these spread high-tempo teams have is when they have to slow the game down, they can't because they're not used to doing it. But clearly the mocks can do both. They can press the, the foot on the gas and, and create tempo, but in a situation like this can slow it down, can huddle, and allow that clock to bleed. They won the SOCON last year in a three-way tie, lost tiebreakers, and were left out of the playoffs. It's been the motivator for them since that selection day. And Houston's going to take a sack there. There's Sewell again. They've needed these guys on defense, and he's going to get flagged for the celebration. Yeah, he did the old flex routine, and that's Tommy. After the play is over, on sports and light conduct, defense, number 21. After to the goal, first down. Yeah, they brought Sewell from deep. You see him right there coming into your screen off to the right side of the screen. Nice job. Brings Houston to the ground, but then just go back to the huddle. Uh, that right there, that, that's enough in college football. This isn't the NFL. This isn't Sundays. You can't do things like that. And, I'm surprised. Mark Schull was a smart player. He knows better than that. He just made a big play. He's got to go back to the huddle. And just, did you see Mike Sanford's face right before the replay? He was a gape. And the referees are explaining this is a dead ball foul. Yeah, let's take one more look at the replay. Again, it isn't much. It's not like he did a, a bunch of things to draw attention to himself, but that's the, the kind of thing that's called in college football, and, and I think it's the right call. You, you got to, you know, again, this isn't the NFL. This isn't Sundays here, and that's going get to get the flag every time. It's crushing. You get third down, you get a big sack. Yeah, especially with the way. Take him out of field, goal, out of field range. goal range. And, and now a new set of downs. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. They're still saying it's first and goal. The chains are down on the far sideline, and Houston will take a hit at the 11. Sewell again made the stop. Yeah, he came flying up trying to make amends for that penalty. Did a nice job. Okay, now the sticks are up. They, that's what I thought. It should have been first and 10. Those sticks were lying down. So second down now and a long six at the 11. We'll call it seven. The mocks have not given the ball up in this quarter. Indiana State having a hard time just getting the football. Crane is Wrapped down, might have lost a half yard. Cassidy the stop. Yeah, this drive started at the beginning of the quarter. They've had it for eight minutes. Green has to Ten come County, off. Yeah. Well, you can't come back on a team if you can't get the football. The penalty hurt. Yeah, and that's the thing. You know, look, I don't care how explosive. Indiana State's offense has been at times. If your offense is standing on the sideline, that's the that's the best defense there is out there. 
15th play of this ginormous drive. Funky snap. Houston has to bring it down himself. Almost got away from him, and he slips down to the five. He'll be close to a first down. It's going to depend on the spot. Looked like he landed on top of the defender, which would not make him down. May have been able to sneak that ball past the, the marker. Looks like he needs a yard, so fourth and one coming up here. Send in the kicking unit. Now we'll take a look here. From my angle, it looked like he may have been, may have rolled on top of the defender. We'll get to see if we can take a look here. Yeah, right there. I mean, he did land on the defender. Had he been able to get more momentum and gotten past the stick, it would have counted. Another yeah. block. They blocked two field goals today, and Ribeiro missed one. Robert Tanyan, number 18, got his sycamore hand on it, and the trees somehow stay alive. They need to drive this down and cut this lead, but a big block, their second of the day. Special teams have been outstanding. Indiana State hadn't blocked a field goal since 2012, and they've got two in this game, but they've got to convert that into points. Is that intercepted? No, incomplete. Lucas Webb thinks he slid under it. Take a look at the replay here, see if the ball did hit the ground. Looked like it, yep. yeah. it looked like the ball did get trapped. The ball just slipped out of his hand? That's a terrible throw. Yeah, that, mm. no way that gets overturned. Yeah, it looked like the ball may have slipped out of his hand, just his receiver was eight yards ball. down the field. Lucas Webb, if he makes that pick, would have six for the season. They've got to throw it going downfield. Tipped away. Just got a paw on it. D Virgin. But a flag is down. Looked like there might have been some contact by Virgin while the ball was in the air. That is the rule in college football. You can have contact until the ball is in the air. Pass interference. Defense number three. The 15 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Hang on, everybody. Yeah, we'll get a look at the replay here. There's D Virgin on the top there. Nice job, but see if we can see it. Right there, see, looks like his right hand just had a little bit of a hand on the jersey there of Owens. As the ball was in the air, that's why the flag came out. Ball's out, knocked out. Box, get it back. Mox are plus 12, excuse me, plus four in turnover margin. Keontae Davis came up with a football and looked like it was Derek Lott number 91 four-star recruit out of high school we seen see Lott there in the middle of just pushing his lineman James officer back into the backfield then gets a paw on knocks it out for a big turnover look at this right there Paris thought he had a lane open but Derek Lott gets a right hand on the football knocks it out huge play Turn over to Mox, get the football back. Five minutes left to go. Derek Lott, the sixth year senior. That is the second fumble recovery from Keontae Davis this year. He's ninth in the NCAA in forced fumbles, but he let a teammate help him out. And just as Indiana State gets some big yards gained, they turn it over. It's the second turnover of the game for them, an interception in the first quarter, and now the fumble there. They were plus 10. Well, yeah, they were plus 12 plus coming 12. in today, and but today minus two. That's really been the key for their entire team is turning the ball over on defense, not turning it over on offense. It's really allowed them to get a lot of their victories this year, but today they're on the wrong side of that number. Yeah. Only seven lost fumbles, and they had forced 15 fumbles this season. And to go with 14 interceptions. 
And they that have is none today. That is the great equalizer in football, turnover margin. You get around plus two or minus two in turnover margin, the team on the right side of that usually comes up away, away with the victory. Mox don't have any turnovers today. Here's Houston. And Indiana State better start stripping for the football. Mark Sewell makes the tackle. He's probably been their star of the game, but unfortunately, they can't stop this Chattanooga, Chattanooga offense. Third down and a yard, a gain of six on that play. And that's the thing, Indiana State's come up with some big stops here, especially on third down throughout the game. The thing that they are missing, though, is that big game-changing turnover they've gotten so many times this year. Again, had the 29 turnovers they've forced so far today. Haven't been able to come up with that big one. Knox run the play clock all the way down, and Houston will keep it. Curdles a man for a first down and slides and stays in bounds. How smart is that? Understands the game, knows he doesn't want to go out of bounds. And the, the clock still will stop for a second to move the chains. Since he picked up the first down. Well, once it resets and there it goes, it winds right back up. This guy's only a junior. Yeah, Jacob Houston, he was David Cutcliffe, the coach for, for Duke. At the time when, when Houston was coming out of high school, said he was one of the best dual threat rec recruit quarterbacks in the United States. Houston turned down offers to Georgia Tech, Wake Forest. Uh, William and Mary decided he wanted to come play football for his dad here at UTC, and he's having a heck of a career. I talked to some friends of mine at the University of Richmond when Coach Houston was the defensive coordinator there, and Jacob was a budding middle school star. They all salivated <laughs> over the fact that they thought he'd come play for his dad at Richmond, who's also in the playoffs. There's the father-son shot. You talk about dual threats, Houston, 150 rushing yards today, 241 passing yards. Just 20 yards away from his career high in rushing. And his dad, Russ Houston, won't show it, but he's very proud of oh, his son yeah. today and how he played, managed this game, weathered a few storms caused by the Sycamores here, but coming up big all throughout the day. Put on the ground to Crane. He'll get inside the five. And the Mox with Connor Underwood making the tackle or on the doorstep of tapping in the final nails in the coffin. Connor 28-14, your score. The ball just outside the one yard line. And the mock fans can feel it. They're going to get their first playoff victory in 30 years. And their first ever appearance in the quarterfinals. That's going to be just about it. Crane gets the score. His third rushing touchdown of the year. And the Mox, the first team to get past the 30 point mark. And an extra point away from right at their average of 35 points a game. Are they going to go for two here? No, there's a flag on the play. Oh, I'm sorry. That's number two. The 50 yard penalty assessed on the kickoff. Still a try. All right, so penalty after the play. And I believe I caught him there lately saying it was to harm Tyson, the fullback, number two, involved in some sort of penalty. A celebration or saying something. So the extra point away from tying their season high or, or tying their season average of 35 points per game. They swept through the SoCon season, winning all seven games. Got a big turnover of Indiana State and turned it into the touchdown. They're up three touchdowns. Now let's take a look 
at how Chattanooga plans for success brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Yeah, and this was the third touchdown on the day. And we talked about, Ryan, about the, the problems that a dual threat offense creates when you have a guy in Houston that can run the ball and pass the ball. He gets the, the run fake, and you see what he does is allows the fake there of the run, the, the threat of the run, allows the wide receiver to get behind the defensive back. We've seen that so many times here, and that's, again, the problems that that creates here when you have that run-pass option. We see that play and that, that style so many times here in college football, and we've sure seen a few times here today on this field. Mocks offensively have just dominated here. This is their fourth game this year with over 500 yards of offense. They have 504 yards of offense. Minute 53 to go in this one. And the Sycamores have to do something in a hurry. They need a sudden change and they get the ball back, but they're not going to get it there. And they'll get it on the 35 when we come back. A minute 46 left before the celebration in Chattanooga. And where the Wildcats have been three times before, The Sycamore is not really having much success. They had a penalty before we came back, but here's our preview of the quarterfinal. For this game, go up and stun the number one ranked team in the FCS. That's going to be quite a football game. Nice job. Look at the spin move here off on the right side there. Getting to the quarterback, that was number 96. Then Trell McMillan. Timeout, Indiana State. It's our second charge team timeout of the second half. Please reset the game clock to one minute, 18 seconds. One minute, 18 seconds. The 2014 NCAA Division I football championship continues next weekend with quarterfinal action on December 13th. All games will be on the Watch ESPN app and ESPN3. For more information, just go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. So we'll have a, a matchup of coaches of the year, Sean McConnell of New Hampshire against Mr. Houston of Chattanooga, both coaches of the year. The win today gives New Hampshire its 11th straight win, a school record. The win for Chattanooga puts them into the quarterfinals for the first time ever. And to me, one of the stats that really jumps out about Chattanooga today, they possessed the ball for over 42 minutes of this football game. Once they got the lead, they were able to bleed the clock out, control it on offense, and not give any more time for Indiana State. Fourth down, 21. They got no choice but to go for it here. In Indiana State, they put up quite a fight. Yeah, I think clearly Chattanooga was the better team, but credit them for coming up with some big plays here and there. To, they had the long 75-yard pass and then the, the fumbled kickoff return that kept them in this game. But in the end, the mocks are just too much for the Sycamores. And a win would give the Mox their first ever 10 win season. Offside, defense number 95, unevaded to the quarterback. It's a five yard penalty, it will remain fourth down. So it'll be the CAA champ against the SOCON champ next week. Wildcats and Mox from Durham, New Hampshire. Pass. I think he had a foot on the sideline. Yes. And that'll be up to the 37 yard line. So they somehow converted that fourth down, an 18 yard catch. And they, they completed a, a couple plays like that, a couple nice throws by Parrish, but. Again, just not nearly enough to overcome this swarming defense for Chattanooga. Yeah, just 127 
yards of offense in the game. That's not going to get it done. Harris tries to dump it off, but Logan got turned around out of the backfield. Incomplete. So the mocks. The last two years have been nine and two at home. They've turned this into a really hard place for opponents and now 10 wins in the last two seasons for that guy right there. Russ Houston. Yeah, and I love talking to Coach Houston yesterday. Remember last year, Ryan, they, they were they were in a three way tie in their conference and they go into the University Center to watch the unveiling of the tournament bracket. They wind up being left out and they really allow that to fuel that fuel them for the for this season. Nice grab up the far sideline. Oh, terrific catch there by Robert Tanya, who had the blo second blocked field goal. Lucas Webb made the stop. 50 seconds to go, a 33 yard catch. And really the long play of the day aside of that 75 yard touchdown for the Sycamores. Who again had one win last year. Trent yeah. Miles left and went and took the job at Georgia, uh, Georgia State. A turnaround for Mike Sanford. He had a lot of guys he had to sort of. Yeah, he had some malcontents. He had to some weed guys out some were, guys. Yeah, a little bit of lack of, a le of leadership. Get some guys to buy in. Team. Yeah, he instituted a, a leadership committee and really turned this program around. They go seven and five and get into the playoffs. And I think the future is, is bright. Indiana State picked off Lucas Webb with 32 seconds gets the turnover the third turnover of the day the mocks have taken away from the Sycamores Look at Coach Houston. Lucas Webb, red shirt freshman, come up with his sixth interception of the season. Yeah, and that'll make Coach Houston happy. <laughs> defensive coach, been a great defensive mind for many, many years. And this is going to ice the game here. Only 13 players in the FCS had more interceptions this year than Lucas Webb. And the best formation in football, the victory <laughs> that's formation. Right, that's right. That's the one the OCs like to call the most. It took 30 years to get back into the playoffs for Chattanooga. And proud alum Russ Houston has his mocks into the quarterfinal round for the first time in school history. Next up for number eight, they get the top seeded New Hampshire Wildcats next Saturday. Thirty five fourteen and a dominating performance five hundred six yards of offense and it was really from the first drive from the word go it was on. Well, it really was Ryan. I remember in the open I talked about it. I thought that Chattanooga was one of the kind of you know under the sleeper teams let's go ahead and say a lot not a lot of attention on the mocks but if you watch them play like we have all week and then clearly out on this field today I think the mocks can uh, can maybe make something happen here as they make their playoff run wow this NCAA FCS football championship is brought to you by Northwestern Mutual We'll step aside a little bit more fanfare when we come back from Chattanooga, Tennis. Our game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks. Log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Good night from Chattanooga.